Hi, and welcome to the Peak Insurance Podcast. Episode 138 is a nice short one and it's an interview with Nikki Wynn. With this interview being done as we did an easy run before my upcoming Coast to Cozzy race. This is a short episode, but I hope you enjoy it in this different format and excuse all the sniffing and the wobbling of being conducted on the run. Um, I do have a gimbal, but it doesn't work with Zoom, so which is what I recorded on, which is why it's uh, rather wobbly, but whatever. Um, I shall have to work it all out a bit better as it was fun and I would like to do this style again. And if you do enjoy this, please, I would love it if you liked it, leave a comment and subscribe. That would be really awesome. Thank you so much. So, are you sick and tired of being injured, having niggles or running in pain? Ensure you're ready for racing in 2022 and come in and see the team at Health and High Performance. You will get to love running again by heading to healthhp.com.au forward slash run or you can easily find them on Instagram, Health High Performance, where they post heaps of helpful videos. Do you want to know all about ultra running and racing and all the tips and tricks to have your best race possible? I'm in the process of completing a, creating a course that will give you all the info you need. Go to peakendurancecoaching.com.au to register your interest and I will let you know when it is ready. And if you register your interest early now, you'll get 15% off off the price when the course goes live. I really hope you enjoy this running chat. Like I said, excuse the wobbles and the sniffles, but I'm sure it'll still be good. Okay, hello and welcome to the Peak Endurance Podcast. Here I am with Nikki. <laughs> hello. So Nikki, tell us, how is your... Um, this is, you know, this is Monday and Coast to Cozzy starts on Friday. Yeah, so um, excited. I feel like it's been so long since we've raced and I feel like I've just been training, training, training. So it's actually nice to finally feel like putting that training to good use. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this was kind of a bit of a last minute decision. I mean, not like the week before, but... Um, you only entered this not that long ago. Yeah, so originally um, I had entered Alpine Challenge. So that sort of just trying to maybe thinking about doing something different, doing some trails. I've done a lot of track and road races and I just sort of thought um, maybe time to try something different. And then when um, Alpine was cancelled oh, a couple of months ago, and I just felt like I'd done such a good block of training, there would be a shame. To waste it. Yeah, to waste and not be able to race. So I actually, you know, because C2K had opened, that announced their entrance. Um, so I then was sort of disappointed, go, God, now I've missed that boat of C2K. Um, and then sort of from talking to a few fellow runners, you know, they told me that a few people had declined their entry. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think just because of the borders and the uncertainty. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. And I'm pretty sure in, in Queensland, you still can't travel uh, into yes. New South Wales. So yep. those people obviously pulled out. So I thought, well, you know what, I can only contact the race directors, see if I can get a late entry. And um, yeah, I was pretty wrapped when... Um, yeah, they called, Greg Wallace called and said I was in the race. That is awesome. So good. And um, what originally made you decide to do Alpine anyway? Because you are these days more known as a track and road runner. <laughs> well, what were you thinking, woman? I know. What was I thinking? <laughs> I don't know. I just felt like, you know, I've done heart to heart earlier this year and I really actually do enjoy the hills I enjoy well, you were originally a trail runner when I first met you yeah and I just think you know what just do something different and I felt like I've done so much track races and um road stuff and I just thought it'd be nice to do something different, yeah, do something different, different training yeah like I do love like the hike in the hills and oh who doesn't love a good hike <laughs> yeah so 
that was why I sort of thought I'd, you know, maybe have a go at Alpine, like, and I'd never done it before, so yeah. And um, training in the hills and that is really good for strength and all that good stuff. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And just to mix up my training. Just so do you think that training you did for Alpine will be of benefit? Um, yeah, look, I do. Like, obviously, Coast of Cos is predominantly road. Yeah. But there are some, you know, good hills in there, I think. You know, if you're a strong walker and biker and, you know, we're running 240 k's, you're not running the whole way. So no. if you're... Oh, really? <laughs> as much as I'd love to. Yeah. So I think, you know, as long as you're a strong walker... Which you are. You're a really fast walker. Yeah, so, and, and you know, I did do even more training once I got into Coast of Cozzy, up and down Basin Alinda Road. Yeah, that's a good one. Up Mount Donna just to be even, you know, I suppose a little bit stronger in my hiking. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I mean, we're running now, the sun's shining, it's glorious. We yeah. were just talking just before I started recording. How's the weather looking? Oh. Well, everybody who knows me knows I love the heat and yes. I love the hot, hot weather. So I've been keeping an eye on the forecast in Eden where the race starts on yep. the beach. And, you know, like every day I get up and check it and I think it's gone from, you know, 17 degrees, sort of one to five mil of rain to 10 to 20 mil oh, rain. And what temperature? It's still about 17. So, yeah, that's going to be... 17, uh, I normally like to say, is a great <laughs> temperature for running, but not when it's raining. You know what, the way I look at it, I can't control it. It's not nah. my control. Yep. I've got, um, you know, just going to have to take this to gear. Hopefully it's not too Horrible. cold. And yeah, yeah. I've got to go. Like the issue for me is when I get cold, I struggle. Yep. So and you don't want to get that cold in your bones. Yeah, so as long as, you know, I keep warm, keep dry, um, I sort of go, I can't do much about it, sadly. No. <laughs> For those who don't know, I am helping. I'm part of a crew for Nikki and I'll be pacing her. Yep. Um, talk to us about what you need from a crew and a pacer. Okay, so I've got three lovely ladies on my crew this year. You know, All like, female crew. Female crew, which I thought, I don't know, just um, three really sort of good close friends that know me really well. Um, Nicole are and Izzy here. Yep. So, you know, my girlfriend Cara and I have been friends over 20 years. She can't run at all, but very organised, very meticulous. And so, yeah. she's got she's got that role of being organised, being the driver when during the night and that. Yep, and just making sure like we're just running smoothly, things are running smoothly, yep. and then you know you need your runners and your paces, so we can have. <coughs> A pacer from 8 30 friday night okay um, and i think too like i know when i've done this before you so look forward to, to that 8 30. yeah just to have company someone to talk to so what time do you start on friday 5 30. so you've been you know over 12 hours yeah on your own yeah so and it's actually you know i like Thanks. to try and break my race down into small you know sort of parts so i go that is a really significant get to 8 30 at night it's exciting yeah I run with you you look forward to it it's company you know if you're feeling flat even having your runner like i feel you girls know me so well yeah that you know maybe even going back and saying oh you know i think you might be in a bit of a flat patch come on what are we going to do to you know lift the mood or yeah you know she's not eating or drinking like I think then it gives you that person who's actually keeping a close eye on you, who knows you. So what so should well. we do, or what should I do, for instance, if you're not eating or drinking? Uh, you know, too, that's where I go. Go back to the crew chief and go, come on, girls. We need to be making sure she's eating and drinking. And whether that's basically force feeding me and telling me, you know, <laughs> have an eat for three hours. Eat. Eat. You've got to get eat something, woman. you know. Yeah. 
bringing out like do you want to try this do you want to try that and you know i'm hoping like i said to you we've chatted earlier um i don't i'm not going into it with a nutrition strategy yeah i'm really going to just eat on feel yep um, and i think for something of that distance that is the strategy yeah and you know, like we discussed during, we spent hours and hours. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, many hours. Yeah. And I said, you know, every time I've had a strict, you know, sort of nutrition strategy, it ends up going out the window. Yep. And I do know in training when I do my long runs, I eat and drink on field. So, yes. So why should a race be any different? Exactly. And I think that's sometimes the mistake I've made before. It's like, I've got to be having X amount of yeah. girls around. I'm like, I never do that in training. Yeah. And I just end up overloading my stuff. The gut, yep. Yeah. So, you know, that's my plan. Obviously, and so, do you drink just water or electrolytes? I drink a mix of get yeah, water, electrolyte, um, like I, like maybe a, a Gatorade. Yep. A bit of. Oil. You don't find that too sweet? Uh, no, look, I just try to rotate. Yeah. Through. I wouldn't drink it all the time, but. Yeah. Like, I don't have a tailwind. Just so you don't get flavour fatigue. Yeah, like, I, I'm not someone who has a tailwind or, you know, like, just take their nutrition in the form of a liquid. So, yeah, yeah. You know, like, I want to try and have the odd gel and yep. just sort of go with... Mix it up. Yeah, exactly. And um, what's, I know you said you're not going to run the whole way. So what's your pacing strategy? Uh, you know, every hill I plan to walk. So yep. every hill that's a little, even an up climb will be a walk. I have in training, you know, trial to like running a K and then just a little walk break. And it's not a structured, yep. I'm going to walk 200 metres. It's like I stop, walk past, pick a point and just go, I'm going to walk to that So point. you pick a point rather than... I feel ready to run again. Yeah, yeah. So I tend to just, and I think I know in my head, my body, you know, yep, yeah, that's further, that's far enough. Like that's yep. enough of a break. You kind of, your body, yeah. I think from my years of experience of running for so, you know, so much, we kind of just know how our body feels yeah, and, and how it'll feel in a hundred meters. Yep. And you know what, I'm sure during the race, <laughs> that walk's gonna get longer and longer. <laughs> But, oh, you know, look, I think, it's all about when this forward progress, really, isn't it? And, and I think, too, you know, you can't run 240 cats that nah. walk. So put that walk in early. Yep, early and often, and and that way you'll still be running parts at the end. And, and yeah, and I think, too, it just helps, even mentally, just give something to look forward to. The K's seem to tick over a bit quicker. Yeah, when you're measuring something and going, yeah. yep. Exactly. I know in my run when you were running with me, that's how that felt. Yeah, and even, you know, like, obviously chatting to my crew and saying, you know, I expect you guys to push me, like, because sometimes it's like, I don't want to run. Yeah. Like, no, nah, you have to run to that point and then you can have a walk. So, yeah. all those little things do make a difference. And, um, that's something I wanted to touch on. Like when we had our crew meeting the other night, yep. um, you talked about how you like tough love. <laughs> and I like love. <laughs> you know, people to be nice to me, but you're happy for people to go, Nikki, come on, get your shit together. Yeah, like I find, I suppose we all respond differently. It's knowing what works. Yeah. Um, it's knowing, like, I'm not offended, and I go, <laughs> I think I respond better. If, um, so, you know, like, someone said to me, you know, suck it up, stop slipping, you're here to run, get your ass out there. Like, yeah, I mean, I suppose that wouldn't bother me, but um, I don't know. I just find, like, sometimes, you know, like, it's not easy. No. Um, you know, we're all in the same boat, and I think sometimes you need that reality check of... You know, you came here knowing it's going to be hard. That's it. We're not going to sit by the road for half an hour while you, you know. So so when you say, because you're on another thing that you said was, you want it to be fun. Yep. No, you just said, <laughs> you know it's going to be hard. How in the hell is that fun? Okay, so for me, I go, you know, 
you Nicole and Cara giving up your time, taking time off work, coming away with me. I thought we were just having a girls weekend. Well, girls weekend. Champagne. With a little run <laughs> Okay. But you know, like I go, I want you guys to actually enjoy the experience. I want you to have fun. And I know if I see you laughing. Yeah, you see it off as well. Yeah, 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 like I do. And I go, that motivates me because I go, I think you can make it fun. And then if I see you guys are enjoying being there, yeah, it does. Like it does motivate you because I want to get a good result for you guys. Yeah, yeah. Because I appreciate how much. And and it's like that. You feel a bit. And I don't like the word obligated, but a bit obligated when people have was the same as me, giving up their time. Yeah. Um, you want to do your best effort for them, not just for yourself, exactly. but to make it worth their while. Yeah, exactly, and that's why I go. So to me, I know. I don't take myself too seriously and I go, I, as much as I want to have the race and, you know, get a good result, the main thing is I go, I want to see you guys enjoying it, you know, and just have a fun experience. Like when the weekend's over, you go, you can look back on it yeah, and go, that was awesome. Yeah. Like, that was so much fun. Such a great race. You might have painful moments, but the, yeah. but the reflection will be positive. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure we'll have many fun stories. <laughs> oh, I'm sure we will. Many interesting stories. <laughs> and I will have my camera, folks. Oh, gosh. Oh, dear. <laughs> yes. Yeah, nice um, yeah. So, oh, it's a little bit hard. <laughs> Holding this boy, I'm getting an arm cramp. Um, <laughs> Do you want to swap sides? Yeah, that's a good idea. So I'll go over here. That hand's gone numb. There you go. That's better. Radio. So. Get a K to go, then we'll yeah. turn around. Um, actually, no, that feels weird. I don't like it. Okay, okay we'll swap that. <laughs> um, <laughs> what do you do when you hit the hard moments? Like when you're suffering. People often ask me this. When you're suffering, um, how do you keep going? So, I, like, you know, sometimes just put my music in. Yep. Find a really good song. Um, just try and get lost in that. The other yep. thing I do is, you know, think about Dan, like my son. I go Aww. think yep. about him. You know, try and think about people that motivate and inspire me, and yep. you know, like other races. And and I also know as much as yeah, you're going to have flat patches, you also work through them. You'll come through them. And I well, I remember when I was in my run. You know, and I was suffering, and you were saying, you will come good. Yeah. And I know you didn't believe me, but you did. Yeah, but I only had like 20k to go. Well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yes, yeah, so that's true. I think you have to have faith in that. Have faith, back yourself in, know you've done the training, believe in yourself. And sometimes it might just be, you know, just you've got to, like, even for me, it's like coffee and a, yeah. little, a reward of, okay. You know, do another 10 case, give you a coffee. So, little water. Do 10 case, Nikki, or no coffee for you. Yeah, little reward <laughs> incentives along the way. And also, to everyone's very rarely does everyone have a race where they're not suffering. And when you're talking about 240 k's, exactly. there is going to be some suffering. Yeah. yeah. You know, even in a 10k, you suffer. Yeah, exactly. So, just believing you will come through the other side. Yeah. And often you feel better. Like, it's surprising. It is amazing. Yeah, you know, I've had races where hammies are tight and have uh, run, like at 50 k's, 150. Yeah. It's like everything's loosened up and feels great. And um, what about sleep deprivation? What do you do for that? That's probably one thing, touch wood, doesn't worry me. And, wow, it's and, such a big thing for me. And probably as well, like I think after doing like four or five 48 hours yeah we actually go through two nights not sleeping i go it's only one night so yeah true you know and, and i do believe after having that done a couple of times going two nights you, you start to get used to it yeah, you mentally you're not as scared okay yeah, yeah but also exactly. physically yeah, yeah. your body adapts yeah why can i go i think yeah like it's never never been something that's worried me and i find huh. while i'm moving I'm yeah okay. like yeah moving does help doesn't yeah, it while i'm moving and running i'm okay and, and two it's one night so i go what's one night yeah, what's one night exactly. yeah. 
young, I'm sure we'd go out clubbing or not. Exactly. Get through one night, no problems. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, can you give anyone any tips for when they're tackling their first, like, big distance? Like, they might have done 100k going up to 100 mile. They might have done 100 mile going to 200. Whatever, might have gone a marathon to 50. Yeah. How do we cope with that big jump? Because whatever distance it is, it's a big jump. Yeah. And you've never trained it. Yeah, look, I think it's important to, you know, like, especially with the long distance, as if you're new, find like a coach, get a program yep. specific for you, because obviously not not one size fits all. So no. And I also think too, it comes down to lifestyle, work, yeah. mum, dad, you know, like I was actually talking to someone yesterday who's actually going from well, road runner to trails. Yep. And even he said to me, I just can't walk the hills. Yeah, and getting used like, to not focusing on pace. And I said to him, I said, you need, he's yes. in the prom, and I'm like, you need to be able to be a strong hiker. Yeah. And he goes, I just can't bring myself to do it. So, it's funny. so, you know, I think it's good to have a good program that you can follow. And I really think if you do the training, as daunting as it is, maybe your first race, you go in there and go, I'm just going to finish it. Yeah. Regardless. And, of and I think that's the best way to do a long yeah. new distance. And then you learn so much. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, you go into your next race and, you know, make the list of all those things you've learned. And now, can I ask what, in regards to what learning, people sometimes think I've never done after race, which. I have plenty. Yeah, okay. Have you ever done enough dress? I've only done enough one run. Wow! And that's amazing. That was probably, and I don't. I come back to I DNF because I was new to the sport. Yep. Uh, I really didn't have experience, and I went similar to what we're talking about. <laughs> too hard, too soon. Well, went from hundred days <laughs> to hundred miles. Yep. And I went off course. <laughs> so you I, just wanted more cakes. <laughs> So I went about 10 k's off course and then you ready to turn around? Turn around? Yeah. And then because um mentally in my head I was thinking, oh my god, this has become 170 now, not 160. Yeah. So that I, just did you in? It just yeah, did me in. And when I thought about it later, I was like, I had so much time. <laughs> of course. I could have gone back and got it, on track reassessed. Yes. But that to me is lack of experience. Whereas yeah. Now, well, you probably weren't even sure if you could do 160, let alone 170. Exactly. And that's probably that lack of experience going, oh my God, I'm going from 100 yep. to 160. I'm not going to do 170. But the more you race and experience, the more, yeah. you know, it's just a mindset change. Whereas I know now if that happened, you're like, oh, well, whatever. whatever. So, what would be the longest run you would do for 240 Ks? 200k training run, maybe? <laughs> no way. I think the longest I did was 65. Yep. So, Which I think yeah. is more than enough because anything more, you're just fatiguing yourself. Yeah. Oh, I agree. And what I did was every weekend, you know, because we're in lockdown, yeah. most of my runs were only sort of like 30, 35 k's. And then when I got into Coast to I sort of went 40. Yeah. And then 45. 50, so, so you still built built up slowly, even though you're yeah, experienced. Yep. I um every weekend when I sort of got to about 45, I then added my pays yep. on my long run each, each week. week. But that was walk run, like yeah. Walked all the hills, really just took it easy. And I looked at it as time on feet. Yep. Practice my walking. And did you running. do back to back runs? Uh the only back to back runs I did one weekend. I was going to do, I think, like 40, 40, 40. Yep. And then we had like really bad weather. Yeah. So I think I ended up doing like that, 30, 40. Nikki, you, you should have run the garden. I should, well, I did, but you I did. did 30. So I did 30, 40, 50. Yeah, that's still bloody decent. But that was it. Yeah. As far as back to back. Yeah. Well, Nikki, we wish you all the best of luck. Thank you. I will be doing updates, of course. But, um, yeah, have fun out there. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to having the girls yeah. on the crew. Like, I think it's going to be 
like a lot of fun. And I it's think, kind of a first, isn't it? Yeah, I think all girl crews are rare. pretty cool. And I think everyone brings different strengths to the team. Yep which you know is going to be awesome it will be it's going to be lots of fun i will post some facebook lives um you know that sort of thing that's if she's not drinking too much champagne. yeah it depends how drunk i am <laughs> we will have a whiteboard so feel free to any motivational quotes yes or please do abusive messages tough love tough love um send drinking competition game ideas <laughs> anything like that yeah. Um, yep, so we'll do that and then an